When you and I watch a murder mystery on TV or at the movies, we can be sure of one thing. By the time the end comes, the crime gets solved. In reality, that's not always so. As News 4's Nick Bogart is here to tell us, Miami Homicide has a detective team working unsolved murders so they won't remain a mystery. That's right, Ed. They're called the Cold Case Team, and they're working on cases that have grown cold with age. They tell us after a murder, if the offender is not caught within 72 hours, chances of catching that killer dwindle. Unlike TV sleuths, they don't close their cases by hunching over fingerprints or examining hair follicles. Most of their leads come from informants' phone calls, hot leads on cold cases. Police are still seeking additional clues in yesterday's double homicide of Manuel and Raquel Rodriguez. The couple was shot to death in what is now believed to have been a robbery attempt. Back in 1983, the double murder of Manuel and Raquel Rodriguez stumped police. Their daughter, Rachel, seen here on the right, actually saw one of her parents' attackers. Today, she recalls that horrifying afternoon. I got home and I pulled into the driveway. My mom was sitting in the porch. And the next thing I, d I knew, it was all over. You know, I heard two shots. I was speaking on the phone with a friend. I heard two shots and I ran into the house. The, one of the killers ran right by me. And when I got into the house, that was it. My father was dead in the bedroom. My mom was dying in the dining room. There were people that you could be proud of. And nowadays, it's not very, you know, you can't say that about just anybody, but we're the kind of hardworking people that you could be proud of. The robbers left empty-handed. Police were at a dead end for leads, and Rachel was left living for the day she would see the suspects' faces again. I was waiting. It's like a waiting game, a cat and mouse game. I know that guilty people were out there, and I don't think you can be guilty forever. I believe that justice has, has to prevail. If not, I would have probably cracked up a long time ago. So with that idea that justice does prevail, I waited. The wait paid off. The Rodriguez case was turned over to Miami Homicide's cold case team. It's up to them to solve the unsolvable, working on leads that are sometimes more than a decade old. Two young men really cared, cared enough to really go out of the way and do the impossible. They actually achieved the impossible. Maybe to her, it looked like we did the impossible, but I believe that's what we do basically every day. Detectives Danny Dominguez and George Cadavid make up Miami's cold case team. They're the ones who, five years later, broke the Rodriguez case after an informant's phone call led them to the suspects. One man has been charged and is awaiting trial, and more arrests should follow. An elated Rachel describes meeting Cadavid in person after he cracked the case. It was like I've met an old friend. He has that kind of laid-back attitude that makes you feel that everything is all right, that he'll take care of everything, and that just relax, you know, the worst is over. And in a way, the worst was over. It's a little bit of uh, getting lucky and, and just doing a lot of legwork. You got to do a lot of talking, a lot of beating around the bush. On this afternoon, the cold case team is digging for the truth on an even older case. Only this is no ordinary whodunit. This is a case of, did anybody do it? This Miami house is being torn up in a search for clues. When police from Toledo, Ohio were questioning this man, Robert Bowman, about the 1967 slaying of a little girl in their city, Bowman alluded to another child he says he killed more than 10 years ago in Miami. And while police consider him mentally unstable, they acted on the tip. Bowman, in 1981, had made several statements uh, saying that, check the house where you used to live. There's a body. I cut up the body of a small girl and stuffed her down um, a well. So while City of Miami Public Works employees search for the well, Cadavid and Dominguez canvass the area where Bowman was last seen, starting at a burned-out restaurant on Biscayne Boulevard where he used to live. Anybody home? I would say the toughest part of our job is trying to locate people, trying to get the truth out of these people. Have you ever seen this person? Up here. Used to, that guy used to stay right next door. Bowman looks familiar to the landlady as well. Did you try this bar down the street down here? Throw smoke? No. Try that bar. Okay, thank you. Boy, does that look like Al. If that's him, I'll turn him in in a second. But it's not Al, and Bowman's vagrant status makes him that much more elusive. Meanwhile, workers have dug up this entire house looking for a well that might not exist and a body they hope doesn't exist either. When some old bones were found, no one seemed surprised. They turn out to be animal bones. Without any evidence of a crime, the digging stops and the search for Bowman ends. 
This man's father was murdered two years ago, but he waited until today to come to talk to Kadavid. He says he can't believe his father was stabbed 19 times over a pair of shoes. We have murders for anything. We handled a murder years ago over a quarter. So you get people who kill each other for anything. In the case of this man's father, Kadavid believes the offender is dead as well. The real satisfaction for the cold case team comes from catching a criminal who thought they got away with murder. Some cases, after so many years go by, it's a surprise to these people that were even around, you know. Some people are actually surprised. Was after so many years, you came over to inquire about so-and-so, or how did you find me, things like that. That's one of the most common questions that were asked. How did you find us? I guess they would be quite surprised. What's their success rate like? Well, they work about 20 cases at a time, Ed, and so far they've closed 15 since being formed in 1987. Two other cases are pending, so there are quite a few people like Rachel who can rest a little easier now. But what's the biggest hang-up about cold cases? Biggest hang-up, I think, with any case has got to be people. Witnesses don't always want to talk to you, and over time, of course, witnesses can disappear, move away. The case can kind of evaporate on you, and that makes things tough on the cold case team. Okay. Thank you, Nick.